Hi everyone, and welcome to this talk about how a cloud product can help you unlock high value through high velocity IT in your organizations. My name is Akshay Anand, and I'm a principal solutions engineer here at Atlassian, and my background is in service management. Joining me today is uh, Chris Davidson. Say hello, Chris. Hello, everyone. My name's Chris, and today I will help bring this talk to life with a demonstration of how the Atlassian platform is going to help you progress your strategy from being conceptual to actionable. This is something I'm really passionate about. Um, much of my career has been spent working with teams, helping to deliver all different types of applications and services. Um, you know, my best memories is when we're working with teams that have got a connection to their strategy, to their purpose. They have a purpose and information flow is, is, is frictionless. And I'm sure many of you can resonate to, to team experiences like that. And I'm looking really forward to, to walking through the journey with you today. I'll hand it back to Akshay so we can get on with the, uh, with the story. Thank you, Chris. Right. Now, we like to start our talk by reminding everyone about what Atlassian's mission is. It's to unleash the potential of every team. And when we talk about every team, we really do mean every team in your organization. And that's not just the people uh, in a delivery space or in your development teams or your service management teams. When we say every team, we mean it. It's not, uh, as I said, it's not just software development or IT operations. Business services or business functions have their own teams. Your leadership organization can be viewed as a team. And so we ask ourselves the question, how can we help each of these teams and many others besides unlock their true potential? Now, one of the things that we, we commonly encounter in our research and in the work that we do day to day is how organizations are starting to focus on business agility. They need to know and they need to know quickly what's valuable and what they need to build and what they need to deliver. They need to get that feedback really quickly as well. But how can teams invest in the right ways of working and products and services to be able to get this uh, feedback as quickly as possible? We're going to focus uh, the rest of this talk on the tooling challenges that we see companies face rather than talking about ways of working. Because believe me, we could speak about ways of working for another hour or two between Chris and myself. But the first challenge I want to highlight when it comes to IT tooling and, of course, ways of working is administrative overhead. Because we find a lot of companies where information sharing is being done manually. People are copying and pasting information from uh, one field in one tool to another field in another tool. And uh, we find that uh, in order to unlock value, information needs to be able to move across or move between these multiple tools with minimal effort or friction. We should make sure that our teams are empowered to use the best tools for the task rather th so that they can self-organize and enable the work that they're doing rather than being constrained to using specific systems or copying information out of one system and into another. And the solution to this challenge is to invest in platforms, not just tools. And Atlassian makes several platforms, certainly, but these platforms are systems of engage, uh, these products, sorry, are systems of engagement that are built on a common system of record, such as Jira. The second uh, challenge that we frequently encounter with IT tooling is platform limitations. Now, no platform, no tool can do it all, right? By, by its very nature, Tool vendors, including Atlassian, are trying to develop products and features that appeal to the widest variety of customers, the most basic scenarios, and allow teams to build on top of that to be able to meet their own uh, requirements or, or needs. Because different organizations work very differently. You could take two banks or two uh, pharmaceutical companies. They do very similar work, but their specific practices, how they manage their, their workflow, or their incident workflows, how they uh, perform budget allocations and uh, how they do portfolio management. Those specific practices can vary quite significantly. So the solution that we're proposing for this challenge is to be able to embrace integrations and applications, allow teams to use the tools that they need, but make sure that those tools allow for integrations with 
uh, other applications, other systems within the enterprise space. And at the same time, make sure that there's a robust marketplace, if you will, or third party integration capabilities and applications and plugins, such as those offered by the Atlassian marketplace, so that teams can truly uh, leverage the, the underlying capabilities of these platforms. And the last one is open biz DevOps. Now, uh, here at Classing, we've spoken about open DevOps for a while. And Chris and I thought it would be a little bit cheeky to put the biz in front of that. Because let's face it, silos exist everywhere. Silos aren't just between operational teams. There can be silos between leaders and managers, between managers and delivery staff. And we need to think as much about how we break down the silos between different levels of the organization, as well as between peer teams within an organization. Because we need to make sure that decisions and um, risk management constraints and governance constraints and all these other good things that we tackle at an enterprise level is able to flow top down and bottom up and peer to peer. And the solution that we, Chris and I would like to propose here is that we need to make sure that we have a connected platform, a platform that uh, using that common system of record is able to connect different types of work, not just different teams. So uh, the Atlassian platform uh, that we're going to show you now can help you connect portfolio management to application development to uh, monitoring and service management and service delivery and customer care beyond that. A, a good way to visualize the flow of value and information across an organization is a diagram that I'm about to share with you. Now, this diagram was inspired by a gentleman called Mark Smalley, uh, who published a paper through DASA, and you can see the URL of that paper in, uh, on your screens in front of you. What we need to do is think about the different uh, layers or levels in an organization, such as the strategy and governance layer, the service layer, the application layer, and, and so on. And of course, outside the organization, uh, we have the market that the organization is trying to service. Now, this uh, market could be an internal market that is being serviced by an internal service team, uh, an internal IT service team, for example, or uh, enterprise service team. So market is not necessarily external to the legal entity of the organization. But over time, we can see that when an opportunity is identified, it drives demand for some sort of value to be created. And that value, uh, that demand is being gener generated uh, by the strategy and governance level of the organization. That in turn drives some investment into creating a value proposition and the definition of certain KPIs or outcomes or metrics that will help the organization understand if value has been created. At this point, we can now start to design a service, which in turn will define an application backlog and an infrastructure architecture that are all required to deliver that value proposition. Now, once the backlog and the architecture and the infrastructure have been built, they can be put into operational state. And once it's operational and the service is running up and running, it can be consumed by its users, it can be supported by the service provider team. Data from the support and the consumption of that service can be combined, of course, with data from other sources to create integrated reports, which can help the organization determine if value has been achieved. And that determination can drive decisions whether to pivot or persist, whether to uh, switch the focus of the organization to meet other types of demand, or whether to continue investing in the value proposition that the organization has just built out. Now, in our research and in our experience, what we found is that most of these digital investments that have happened over the last three, four, five, six years have been lower down in the stack. They've been around uh, streamlining the service uh, and, and the, the service experience. It's been about uh, making sure that applications get developed faster, infrastructure gets built up faster, and, and so on. For those of you who remember Gold Rats, uh, theory of constraints, you would recognize that what we're showing you here is a local optimization of the work being done in one part of a very, very long value stream or value chain, effectively. So what Chris and I were asking ourselves is, well, how can we also help organizations reduce the amount of time taken to move from demand through to uh, objective setting and coming back up the other way, how can we reduce the amount of time it takes to generate these reports and make the decision whether value has been created or not? And that's where uh, Atlassian's products can come in because 
Confluence is a great tool to get people and teams from every level of the organization collaborating and working on a common information sharing platform. JIRA Align can help with the determination of the investments and the outcomes and objectives. Uh, JIRA uh, and JIRA software specifically can help with uh, maintaining the information needed as you build out your service applications and infrastructure. JIRA service management comes in on the other side of that divide when the service is operational to help teams track the consumption and support of said service. And then JIRA Align comes back in to help with the reporting and the determination of value. And at this point, I think we, we've heard enough of the theory, so let's start looking at what the tools can actually do. So Chris, let me hand this off to you to set the scene and take us through the tool demonstration section. Thanks very much, Akshay. Really looking forward to bringing this to life. And whenever we do a, a demonstration of real software, we're gonna give you a quick tour through all of our um, platform here now, but it's best to set the scene with a bit of a story. So let's imagine that we're about to put our hats on. Uh, we're going inside an organization, a large organization. Think like 10,000 people. You know, we could be a bank. Um, and over time, uh, historically, this bank, this organization has used its web channels and its email channels to communicate with customers. But actually, demographics are starting to change and people are demanding a sort of, you know, um, a really high quality mobile first experience. They're comparing their services to other mobile applications that they use. There's fintechs that are starting up introducing uh, mobile services. And so we need to respond and we're going to follow this life cycle, this sort of opportunity to value that that actually has taken us through and we're going to see how this organization can produce a you know a mobile first experience that's going to allow them to be really relevant in the market and keep their customers happy so we've arrived here in Jira Align and we're just thinking about that outcome. We spoke a lot at the start about, you know, connection to purpose, you know, all teams, you know, they want to be able to connect to strategy and how can we make that actionable? What we're looking at here is sort of that, that end result where our mission, vision and values as an organisation can be connected all the way, not just to work and going as far down to our, uh, to our work in teams backlogs, but also our outcomes and our our objectives. This is what we're trying to reach. And as we go on this journey to the, the model that Akshay has been introducing, I'm just going to use Jira Align to bring up a framework map here and hopefully you recognize the model that we've just spoken through. Let's take this journey. Let's imagine we are a bank. We are the um, sort of we're going to produce this mobile first experience. We've got to define our opportunity and shape it as demand and sort of um, articulate what success looks like and how we're going to actually you know, measure success as we move the dial for our business. So the first step in making our strategy sort of actionable is that we've got our strategic backlog. And I'm highlighting here that we've got our, our sort of corporate strategy to hit a goal around capitalizing on emerging technology trends. But if we just come a layer down in that sort of identification of the opportunity and shaping it as demand, we have an investment theme here, all about becoming mobile first. And our investment theme, we're going to be looking to invest over a number of our sort of programs over a, a number of periods of time. And importantly, we're going to make an investment. We're effectively going to make a bet in terms of the allocation uh, of our uh, investment to, to drive some, some new business here. And as we start to decompose how that investment will be spent, we'll add work, we'll create demand to our theme. And that demand, the initiatives that we'll add, we'll start to see sort of the uh, requirements hierarchy coming up. We're seeing that strategy to execution here. And I'm just going to take us a layer down into that sort of that demand decomposition. And where we've arrived here is an initiative. And obviously a fair bit of information here as we shape our initiative, but I want to draw your attention to the concept of firstly outcomes, you know, it's all about outcome management and we have the, we have the important step of defining what success looks like. So in this particular case, we've set an OKR or an objective. We've set a description for what this looks like. We're gonna talk about being the market leader in the mobile banking space. And importantly, we've described the result. 
And that result is, you know, 50% of our transactions are going to be over a mobile device. That's how we'll measure it. That's how we'll report it. And we can see how we're going to traject, how we go towards this trajectory. Later in our journey, when we get to reporting, we'll see how we surface that progress. But importantly, what we've done here is we've described how we know what it looks like when we get there. So maybe if we just keep orientated in where we are in our journey, we've been looking very much at this opportunity definition and down into our investment, our, our demand investment and setting our KPI, or in this case, an OKR. What happens when we go a step lower, which is to you know, really decompose work down into the backlog? We're heading towards a, a system of engagement. You know, Akshay spent a lot of time talking about system of engagement, systems of record. We're moving into a system of engagement here, which is how do the teams you know, um, make this brilliant mobile app come to life for customers in, in their hands? Now, you can see here that we have the concept of the connection of work, strategy to execution. We've got some Jira epics. And I'm simply following that connection towards ultimately coming into the system of engagement for this particular team in JIRA. Now, we've arrived into you know, an atomic unit of work in this system of engagement here. And what we might do is just give us a sense of what is that team going through um, in terms of their way of working. So we've got the sort of the concept of what is their workflow that works best for them? We've got a software team here, which is looking at sort of going from, you know, in progress to testing and accepted and ultimately to released. Now, you know, a business team or a marketing team, they may have a different workflow, a different approach. What really matters is empowering teams to work the way they want in their system of engagement of choice while still surfacing the outcomes all the way up to the top. Um, you know, this, this uh, surfaces another really key topic we see come up with a lot of customers and, and actually sort of touched on this with the concept of integrations. What I'm looking at here is let's imagine we've sort of gone from the, the decomposition of our work, but we've actually got to, we've got to make the mobile app, right? We've got to make the code that is the mobile app. Um, yes, we've got work tickets, et cetera, but what about the software that ends up in customers' hands? What we're looking at here is we've got this view of the, the commits that the engineers are making and indeed the deployments to which sort of sites are they going out to? Is it staging production, for example? Now, this is a classic case of giving those teams the ability to have a system of engagement of choice. You know, in this particular case, we are talking to, to Bitbucket, but in Atlassian, the concept of open DevOps means that this could be just as easily um, GitLab or GitHub. You know, it, it depends on the system of engagement that developers want to work in, and they can simply add in the JIRA ticket IDs to their commits from that system of engagement, and all the change will flow up and be visible into the system of record for work. So a really powerful capability there in terms of integrations. And there's many other marketplace or third-party integrations that we can look at to help you know, really give those teams the empowered way of working that they want um, so that they can, you know, their potential can be unleashed. Let's keep our story going. Let's just come back. We've been looking a lot at how we've decomposed work. Before we go into our mobile application has been live, you know, all along this journey, we've been sort of, you know, we've got this kind of concept that in, in, in modern IT, it really is a balance of technical and non-technical work. And how do we retain the narrative? How do we shape and communicate the why we're doing what we're doing and, and what's involved? How do we tackle the concepts of you know, visibility and the impact that visibility can have? Let's go on a look at, uh, at Confluence. And maybe if I just come in through the Atlassian platform, I can simply select where I need to be depending on my job to be done. In this particular case, I'm coming over to Confluence. And let's imagine that we are, you know, we've been shaping over time this mobile first experience. We've been describing what our, what our vision is. We've been articulating what success looks like. And obviously that's in our OKR and JIRA Align. Um, importantly, over time, what we can do is we can build out a repository of information that helps collaboration, helps visibility. 
Um, we are able to communicate. We can do things like inline commenting. In this particular case, we've got a number of people forming up as key stakeholders, but we've got a comment that, you know, we also need finance as a stakeholder because as this mobile app goes out, we're going to need to train support so that they can handle it. So we can, we can communicate directly on a page. We could choose to, to, to share, share the page directly out. Um, and importantly, you know, we can now face into the balance of, you know, um, how much, how do we get the maximum visibility? How do we have visibility that drives impact while also acknowledging that, you know, on balance, sometimes information can't be super visible. You know, we want to tackle um, breaking down silos. We don't want things locked in email. We don't want things locked in PowerPoints. We want teams connected and communicating frictionless. Um, but in some cases, depending on, you know, we might be defense industry or really highly sensitive, we might want to bring some, um, some controls into how that information is visible. So it's really about finding the balance and it's about the Atlassian platform helping you find that balance. Some of which can come, I think Akshay made a really good point at the top where we said the ways of working and the practices, um, you know, some of which we can really look to things like templates. Um, templates are super powerful for coming up with, um, you know, you could use the word guardrails, um, you know, here just picking on some ITSM templates. You can use Confluence to pre-shape templates that allow you to accelerate getting information available um, or, or indeed it's, it's, it's a really good way just for, for helping teams to have a reference or an example of how they might work and keep some consistency, particularly at scale. So templates are a great way also to help shape our work. Okay, let's come back to our journey. We've got our mobile app. We've been, um, we've been describing it. We've, we've broken it down as an opportunity. We've put measures against it. We've put some investment against it. We've seen how our backlog decomposes. We develop software and code and we can see where that code is. We've seen how we've shaped the story and kept that sort of the why and had open impactful collaboration. Let's keep our journey going now and think about our mobile application has gone live. Um, we, we're, we're now out in the marketplace and customers can download the mobile application. Firstly, um, maybe if we come back to our journey here, firstly, just to recap that we've been able to take specific work items and decompose them from our Confluence page. And we're now at the end, our, our mobile application has gone live. One, one thing that obviously is really powerful is the ability when it comes to tracking change. Um, if we just come into one of our service management projects, if we think about the, the software engineers that were developing that application, how do we bring automation to bear so that their daily activities can be focused on the most impactful work and we reduce the amount of toil while we still keep really good control of um, the, uh, the sort of governance? And we can also think about you know really bringing sort of um, uh, assurance into our daily work as opposed to an afterthought. What we're looking at here is the list of all the deployment changes that are taking place. And these can be run from an automation perspective. Um, we can keep governance and control around how changes are being authorized to go live. And that can give us assurance and quality, as I say, built into how we work. We keep our story going. We've made the changes. We've deployed our mobile application, but it's payday. And customers are using the mobile app to check their bank balance. They want to make sure that they've got enough money to go out on the weekend. You know, as we keep our, our journey going up now towards the, the, the service management piece, what happens as we start to get an overload in, say, our database is, is being over, overloaded because we have too many concurrent users? I can see in my incidents here that we have an example of, of um, our mobile app. In this particular case, we've had a mobile app incident come through from, in this case, an app dynamics uh, alert, and we're looking at a specific incident. Obviously, we get information about our time to resolution, et cetera, but importantly, we've been able to surface where we think affected services are. We can see related type incidents and we're starting to get information about what's coming through. We can even navigate and um, sort of surface information from our CMDB to understand where things are coming from and what is driving, what might be driving this incident. 
importantly, we can start to bring that collaboration. We can connect all the right people. We can create chat channels or start a conference call. We can bring different responders together, the on-call registers, the escalations for those on-call registers, et cetera. And importantly, we can look at our knowledge base that might help us respond to those issues more quickly. What we're seeing here is that we can get the right people. We can really collaborate quickly for the best customer outcomes. And, and you know, when this incident is finished and resolved, you know, we have that superpower of being able to keep the traceability of connecting, you know, in this case, you know, we've had some scalability issues for over 20K concurrent users, but we're able to create a JIRA ticket that goes into the team's backlog that they can then prioritize for um, continuously improving their service. So we see that work connection of the platform happening, but also from a continuous learning perspective, I think in this particular case, we see the use of Confluence again when it comes to how does our retrospective operate? How do we bring a diverse set of perspectives together so that we can not just record things like in what we're seeing here is the, you know, the time and the duration of the outage. What we're actually able to do is to progress that and connect it to actual real work item and real actions that we are going to take in order to continuously improve the service. Okay, so our journey, we've come down and we've made our mobile application live, customers are happy, we've given them great customer service, but what about reporting and making things visible? What about how we move the dial for our business? Let's come back into JIRA Align here now, and let's go and look at, from a, from a reporting perspective, I think you know one of the first aspects that we'd look at is um, what about an economic view? What about that view of, you know, we've made the investment, you know, as a leader, something I'm concerned with is how, how my investment has, has been used. Have I got a return on my investment? We can see here we have our mobile first uh, initiative and we've got all of the work connected to the system, which is surfacing up and allowing us to extrapolate a, uh, a labor cost for that. But what's important is we see we set some guardrails at the start of the quarter. We wanted 40% of our investment to go into the mobile first uh, theme. And we thought we'd spend around about 10% keeping the lights on. As the work has progressed, both from an estimated and indeed an accepted spend, the work that's been done, we can see that in fact, we've had you know, only 13% has gone on the mobile first initiative, while you know, nearly double what we planned, 17% is on keep the lights on. We're seeing that variance and we're able to drill in and see you know, why is that and how can we respond to it? We're helping people have better conversations um, and we're leading towards, you know, actually mentioned the sort of pivot or persevere conversation because we're able to have better conversations. Um, we can have better discussion around topics like, you know, do, are we moving the dial for the business? Um, and maybe the final step in our visibility and reporting. And you know, given time in demos, we can't show everything. There's a lot of reporting. If we think about the concept of status reporting in Team Central, which you've probably seen elsewhere in Teams 22, um, what we're showing you today is at the top of that, at the top of our picture, as we come up to sort of the value and have we achieved the outcomes that we wanted. What we're looking at here is we can come back and we can see our our objective, our OKR that we, we that we started with, and we have that ability to come and see, you know, how are we performing over time in terms of moving the dial for getting our fifty percent of customers using the mobile application. So we have a direction of travel, and we can make those decisions, as actually said, when we look at the work how much work is completed to what results we are making, we can have those pivot or persevere conversations. Okay, so hopefully that's given everyone a real life demo. It's a quick tour, it's real life, we're using the product, it's out there today. And what I'll do now is I'll hand it back to Akshay. Hopefully you've seen how the Atlassian platform is all our products working better together to really help you sort of optimize that opportunity to value story for your organization. Akshay, I'm gonna pass it back to you to wrap it up. Thanks, Chris. That was um, a really useful, short, but really useful tour through several products and several features of several products. And as Chris mentioned, we only scratch the surface of what each of these individual tools can do. There's a lot more we could have talked about, but 
you know, in the interest of time, without making this a, you know, a five day long video for you to sit and watch, you know, we, we chose certain highlights, certain features that we wanted to talk about and surface as part of this, um, uh, as part of this presentation. We would love to be able to talk to you um, and, and some of your teams about some of the other challenges they may be facing. But hopefully what Chris has shown you and what we've talked about thus far shows how information and value flows across an organization, flows across different parts of an organization, all the way from the strategy and governance layer of the organization, all the way down to infrastructure and coming all the way back up as well. So let's uh, let's uh, start to wrap this up. And I'd like to leave you with three key takeaways here. First of which is around tool selection. I, I said it at the beginning of the call and, and Chris also emphasized it, that we need to provide teams with systems of engagement that reflect how they want to work. But at the same time, there are other stakeholders in your organizations who need a dependable system of record from which to derive statistics, reports, trend analysis, and so on. So we need to make sure that we can pro provide teams with systems of engagement and systems of record. The second, um, as, as Chris mentioned a, a few times, we, we want to be able to complement uh, out-of-the-box integration capabilities with third-party solutions. Remember, no one tool can do every single thing under the sun, every single thing that your organization needs. We need to make sure that we're choosing tools that can integrate with other uh, enterprise-grade tools, other uh, uh, systems that your organization is using, whether that's uh, through out-of-the-box integrations or by providing third-party solutions. And the last is we need to make sure that we work on what matters. It's not just about aligning tactical uh, goals and objectives with operational work. We need to align strategy with tactics with operational uh, delivery work. We need to make sure that we have that feedback loop so we quickly understand when we need to switch focus from certain uh, investment decisions to uh, other investment decisions. We need to make sure we're working on what matters. Because at the end of the day, although Atlassian has talked about how our mission is, the poten uh, uh, is unleashing the potential of every team, it's no different from your mission. You're also in the position you're in to unlock the potential, to unleash the potential of every team in your organization. Thank you for taking the time to listen to us today. If you want to email us, uh, to reach out to us to share some of your experiences or ask any follow-up questions, please do use the emails that you see on the screen in front of you or get in touch with us through the event website. Uh, let us know what you thought about uh, what you've seen, what you've heard, share with us what uh, other challenges you may be facing as well. But uh, until next time, from me, it's goodbye. Thank you, everyone. From me, it's goodbye.